Sayyidat wa Sada al Hadur, Yufna al Karam, Salam al Ladies and gentlemen, may the peace of God be upon you. We would like to welcome you again at the uh, Emirates Center for Strategic Studies and Research. In this conference, which the center is organizing to celebrate its 20 year anniversary. The center has taken upon its responsibility or taken upon its shoulders to support decision making process and it has contributed through different initiatives in different fields in supporting strategic vision of the UAE. And it has been able to become a very important center and a basic pillar which supports decision making process and public policies. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall start this conference with our, with our first session entitled The Importance of Research Center in Supporting Public Policy. And we are honored to uh, receive two important uh, figures uh, who are playing a very important role in research work due to their experience and their work in managing uh, pioneering research centers which play a vital role in decision making process and supporting public policy through what through our uh, speakers we shall uh, answer a number of questions about research centers and its role in supporting decision making process especially when it comes to the relationship between decision makers and research centers and what does decision makers need and want from these centers and what do they expect from them Ladies and gentlemen, I shall uh, give the floor to our speakers, and we shall start with Dr. Farhan Nizami, uh, the director of Oxford Center for Islamic Studies. Uh, he uh, also uh, works uh, in academic institutions. Uh, a Prince of Wales fellow, uh, Magdalen College, uh, Oxford, and a series editor of Makers of Islamic Civilization starting 2004 and the founder editor of the Journal of Islamic Studies. You have 20 minutes, uh, Doctor. Uh, kindly uh, start. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great uh, pleasure and honor to be here to join in the celebrations of the 20th anniversary uh, of the establishment of the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies. Uh, indeed, it provides an opportunity to pay tribute to the work of its Director General, who has made it possible, and I certainly remember uh, the idea of the center being discussed and now to be able to look back, literally look back on the great achievements of the last 20 years, so many publications, normally one does not associate with think tanks. And it is really to their credit that in such a short time, not only has the institution been established, but also its work has continued to flourish. This anniversary, in a sense, therefore, is an opportunity for us to rejoice in the achievements of the ECSSR and the sheer range of topics it has deliberated in its conferences, the different axes that we were told about in the opening session, indeed the workshops and the publications are most impressive indeed. And I'd also like to mention here the commitment of this center to freedom and diversity of both sources of information and the perspectives deployed to interpret that information. And I mentioned this at the very beginning because that is the test of the success of any think tank to ensure that both there is, there is a diversity of sources of information and in the interpretation of that information. And in this respect, I'd also like to mention the workshops and conferences, indeed the most recent uh, conferences that we have co-sponsored with the ECSSR on security in the Arabian Gulf. This collaboration is something from which we have benefited 
greatly at Oxford and we place the highest value on further opportunities to investigate and research topics in areas of mutual interest. An anniversary also serves as a very important uh, opportunity to take stock of the legacy of the institution as a whole, to look at it, if you like, in the round. Doing so can help in choosing directions for the future and priorities for going forward. We have heard this morning of two splendid suggestions, the possibility of creating a database, but in particular, I must say, the importance of establishing units for area studies in the Gulf. This ability to understand the other, this need to understand the, the other, is so important in today's interconnected world. Because we do believe, and certainly this is the basic premise on which the Oxford Center for Islamic Studies was founded, that good scholarship promotes understanding, and good understanding can disable prejudice. It creates those bridges of understanding which are strong enough to carry the weight of our differences. Now, most people would accept as a definition of a think tank that it is a private, independent institution, independent of the powers that be, and draws on the intellectual and professional experience of academics and others to analyze issues of concern and to recommend policies. As indeed we were told earlier, the distinguished tradition of Brookings and the fingerprints of many of their people on many policies. And I'm very pleased that the president of that institution happens to be an alumnus of my college. So I have to plug in for Brookings here. In short, a think tank is an institutional device to harvest specialist skills and expertise for public service. And I think it is in this harvesting of the skills and deploying them for public service lies the raison d'etre for these institutions. Any modern government employs specialists in its various departments, civil and military. These specialists are tasked with weighing policy options and making recommendations. However, many of these experts working in different ministries or departments of the government or of the state have various considerations to bear in mind. And therefore, their analysis can sometimes be vulnerable to various pressures. A think tank, in theory, therefore, has to be sheltered from such considerations. It is supposed to be part of civil society, like the specialist charitable foundations that look after welfare needs. In practice, however, because of the overlaps between different elites in society and private individuals who have the means to fund think tanks, their output can also be susceptible to various influences. It does not matter that those individuals have benevolent intentions or not. The fact is that the work and reputation of the think tank has to be always protected against any outside influences. Now, the only way to avoid this outcome is for those who support think tanks to guarantee, almost if you like, as a religious commitment, that the institution has full freedom to investigate issues and to recommend policy options. And it is for this reason, particularly, that I think we need to be very grateful for those who have supported the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies, and we heard of the personal interest that the Crown Prince has taken in the work of the center to provide it that space in which to continue its work unconcerned by whatever the issues surrounding it may be. Now, I call this almost a religious commitment because 
I don't think it is inappropriate to think of it in a sense primarily as a moral, not a political commitment, that it offers and it is in a sense a gift with no strings attached. Because the primary belief is the ultimate authority and value of truth, uncontaminated by the coercive economic and political influences that various institutions can face. And it is precisely such a commitment that I think has been the good fortune of the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies. To that blessing, the leadership of the ESSR has added a working habits and structural arrangements that secure the independence and objectivity of its output. These arrangements include a systematic, sustained effort to bring into the research and discussion space those who are likely to hold diverse views framed in diverse ways and perspectives. <clears throat> Included in this diversity are different disciplinary perspectives and the frameworks that stem from cultural and confessional backgrounds. What gives coherence to all this diversity, if I may use the expression, is a shared commitment, a desire to get to the truth, to come up with ideas and solutions. Sometimes the effort can not result in easy formulations. Sometimes we cannot find out all that we need to know. We cannot forecast enough of the possible outcomes of certain options to recommend any of those, any of the solutions. This uncertainty and diffidence about what we find out, what we can really know is an attitude more at home in the university faculty than in an effective think tank. And I say this because I work in a university which is 800 years old. And I think in the university environment, we can indulge in the luxury of taking the long term, the long durée, and think about issues. Universities study, even when it is funded by private corporations, rather than public persons expected to be detached from the concerns of everyday life. University research does not have to be useful straight away, does not have to be relevant, if you like, in the short term. This detachment from immediate relevance gives human curiosity the intellectual innocence to imagine options and possible solutions that simply do not come to minds that are preoccupied with an emergency or with a narrow uh, immediate agenda. However, the think tanks have the great advantage of benefiting from the research and the expertise in the universities and to deploy them for the immediate solutions of issues that concern society at large. And I think it is this relationship between the think tanks and the university environment that is crucial in ensuring the success of both. In, in sum, therefore, my hope is that as we celebrate this anniversary, we remember that the successes of the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies have been built upon its intellectual independence and its willingness to collaborate with and draw upon the intellectual attitudes and expertise that are more pr easily practiced in the humanities and sciences as these are taught and researched at in, in the university environment. We have heard of various examples of their collaboration with institutions right across the world. And as I indicated, we ourselves have benefited in our collaboration with the center. This is in part a matter of attaching a particular individuals to specific projects in the role of consultants and research managers in part to join projects with university faculties and departments. This is established practice which this center has deployed and I think is the key to the success of many think tanks, as I indicated earlier, in its ability to harvest 
the expertise and the skills that we find in universities and other institutions right across us. So I'd like to conclude here by congratulating the Emirates Center and wishing them the best for the next 20 years. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Farhan, for this uh, presentation and what you're saying. And I think we have a good relation between the, us and uh, the Export Center, and we have many projects going annually. Uh, we move to the second speaker, Dr. Al-Sadiq Bakhit Al-Abdullah Al-Faqih, the Secretary General of the Arab Thought Forum ITF at the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, who will speak uh, and respond to uh, an important question, what do decision makers want from research centers? Dr. Al-Faqih has been the Secretary General of Arab Thought Forum in the different uh, fields of diplomacy, politics, and uh, a professor of the universities and published many studies and essays and uh, and participated in hundreds of uh, 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 hundreds of conferences and seminars and events. Dr. Sadiq is a member of many international and uh, regional uh, associations and forums and uh, research centers and think tanks. Uh, Dr. Sadiq Al-Faqih, you are most welcome and you have 20 minutes to present your paper. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Ahmed al ustav uh, the uh, chairman of this uh, session, for your uh, kind introduction. And I think that uh, uh, we should uh, present our gratitude to the director of this uh, 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 center, which uh, was born uh, 20 years ago, uh, uh, to His Highness uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and the Chairman of this center, and to my dear friend Dr. Jamal Senad Al Suwedi, the Director General of uh, this uh, Emirates Center, who uh, provided the vision and the leadership uh, uh, to make all this excellent success uh, uh, about which, which, which we have been hearing throughout these 20 years and uh, uh, what uh, proves this is the great uh, uh, achievement, the publication of more than 1,000 books uh, that are now uh, put uh, behind us and, uh, and this uh, giving and this uh, great uh, uh, work uh, presented throughout the uh, last 20 years and they will remain, I'm certain, uh, 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 producing uh, all these things uh, for those who are mainly concerned whether in the United Arab Emirates or other nations and this country gave this center what it deserves, in fact, and I'm sure that it has made, uh, has benefited from its own products and all the uh, ideas and proposals and uh, all other enablers uh, uh, to uh, public uh, uh, policy. And this is the relationship here uh, uh, between the decision maker and the think tanks uh, uh, all over uh, the world. Uh, this uh, uh, tie which has never been detached. It has been always there since the first attempt to establish a think tank uh, uh, and all of us know that uh, uh, we know that name, Rusi, who uh, start, Rusu, Rusu is, uh, earlier in the 19th century, who took an official uh, attempt to make the British uh, armed forces uh, communicate with each other through different disciplines and uh, through the different uh, positions and situations because it was difficult uh, for the military to uh, enter into dialogue with other institutions and this uh, an institution uh, presented an, an opportunity to uh, have a dialogue within the armed forces institution and since then there was a close relationship between the uh, uh, decision maker, politician and the think tanks and the research centers and we have heard 
about uh, the role of the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies and Research and other similar organizations and institutes in the UAE and the GCC states and the Arab countries and other uh, places in the world. We have different indicators and evidence and the names of these institutes and organizations mentioned here uh, this morning indicate and point out uh, this uh, uh, fact. Uh, Chatham House, Brookings Institution, or any other international organization, as my uh, uh, colleague uh, Dr. Farhan Nizami has just uh, mentioned, that there is uh, some, uh, there must be a kind of uh, differences even within the uh, think tanks or the academies or the universities and the uh, uh, research centers, uh, uh, whose m main purpose was uh, uh, to be an enabler to the uh, decision maker and to support the policies. Uh, and the, uh, the general uh, uh, objective of the public interest in any uh, society. And these academic uh, uh, institutions uh, 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 insist on having research and revealing the different uh, facts in their own studies, but they do not want to have a direct influence on any decision may, that may be taken. Sometimes they may take the formalities of research uh, seriously more than the results, but the think tanks and research centers, as you all know, intend always to have uh, serious outcomes and to have uh, the public interest and the interest of the state. Uh, uh, and of course, they uh, pass it through uh, different uh, times and, uh, and different phases. The time for the research centers uh, uh, differ, uh, differs from that of, the, of the, the universities and academies. And you may uh, have noticed, for example, the, uh, the, the the uh, 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 the uh, ISS uh, the international uh, institutes between Georgetown and the ISSS and the uh, needs of the uh, political market between two uh, brackets uh, in uh, Washington and uh, uh, because uh, that institute uh, found uh, uh, itself uh, forced to be independent because they have their own special requirements uh, which are completely different from those ages in which they uh, found uh, uh, necessities of uh, cooperating with certain governmental institutions. And the time and the age is different also, uh, 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 even in, within the uh, uh, think tanks is now different, of course. And this is what is required in the relationship between the two uh, groups, between the politicians or the decision makers uh, 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 and the think tank, uh, which uh, provides the information and the intellectual uh, 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 support uh, to the decision making and the policies or pu public policies because the space of knowledge is uh, different from the space of uh, policy making and the decisive uh, time for taking decisions is not that uh, time of producing knowledge that would support uh, decision making because there are two different times and two different uh, time frames in dealing with the objective truth and uh, with uh, the production of knowledge, but in general, all, uh, this uh, knowledge which is produced in a time which is different from the decision-making process is required under all circumstances and for all circumstances, and therefore we have a public interest here. The time uh, provided for the politician is narrower than that of the researcher, and therefore this knowledge and information should be provided to them in order to give him or her the chance to examine the facts of uh, this uh, knowledge or this enabling knowledge in order to take a decision. And therefore, uh, this relationship was established. And if we take all the effective uh, and influential organizations, not only in the uh, uh, Arab countries, when you find that the decision makers used to have the initiative and the support uh, at the very beginning, and, uh, and this support should come from organizations organizations that are mainly concerned with the public policies, and therefore we take this relationship between think tanks and research centers and the governments and other things. These think tanks do not have any suspicions regarding this relationship, as do the academies and the universities have. And this is another difference between think tanks and universities, what is called freedom or academic freedom and objectivity. Uh, 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 do not impose 
impose their own restrictions on think tanks. Yes, uh, they seek objective truth. Yes, they seek that freedom, and they adopt freedom in their own production and uh, independence in producing that knowledge in order to support the uh, decision-making process. But, uh, but they do not have that sense of concern and uh, susceptibility or kind of doubt regarding the academic freedom, uh, which has an absolute meaning because they try to produce uh, knowledge for knowledge per se, and therefore, uh, uh, without uh, having any intention or any attitude or any uh, 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 disciplines as the uh, academic university uh, uh, institutions do, there is a close relationship between the two uh, organizations, and the ECSSR talks about it, and the opening speech uh, by His Excellency Dr. Jamal Salad Suedi talks about these facts. What made this uh, center uh, uh, an indicator to this uh, close relationship between a think tank and uh, and other centers for decision making or uh, uh, policy making in the United Arab Emirates and other uh, uh, institutions. And when we claim sometimes that there is a gap uh, uh, between decision makers and intellectuals and thinkers, uh, we find that when we examine this fact, uh, uh, we find that this uh difference or this gap is a kind of an illusion and not a reality. In fact, uh, I, I represent the uh, uh, Arab Thought uh, Forum, which was established 33 years ago. It was established by thinkers, intellectuals, and let me here uh, greet uh, Dr. Saadeddin Brahim, one of the former Secretary Generals of the Arab Thought Forum, who is present here among uh, us today. Uh, this uh, Arab uh, Thought Forum was established by 25 Arab thinkers, intellectuals, who met uh, in an attempt, as they claimed at that time, to bridge the gap uh, between the thinkers, intellectuals, and the decision makers. But if we review the uh, uh, 25 characters or personalities who were there, where they were decision makers at that time, but because they were intellectuals, they felt that there was a bigger need uh, than they uh, did uh, have at that time to bring more intellectuals and more uh, thinkers and philosophers to support the political decision and the public policies in the Arab world. That was an initiative by His Highness uh, Prince Al Hassan of Jordan, who was the crown prince at that time and uh, an uh, effective ruler at that time. And a large number of intellectuals attended that meeting and they were mostly decision makers or would be decision makers in the Arab countries at that time in one way or another. So there was no disagreement between the needs of the politicians and the relations and the inception of these institutions. And these institutions were established and created for a need, and they confessed this need, and they admitted, and they were existing for this need. So there is a relationship, inseparable relationship between the decision maker and these think tanks, uh, which are mainly concerned with uh, uh, studies and research that uh, uh, aim at uh, uh, reaching that purpose of supporting the public uh policies for the public interest or the good public interest or and therefore I tried in my own uh, in preparing this paper on this subject. Uh, I tried to, uh, to 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 review the, the the achievements of the Emirates Center. What did they do uh, 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 throughout these 20 years uh, uh, by producing such a huge uh, amount of knowledge that stands behind us here, literally speaking, uh, just behind us here? Many many introductions about uh, uh, general issues that the center dealt with, but very briefly, very briefly, I tried to see some fragments here and there, some indicators here and there, what uh, uh, do the decision makers want to do and what uh, did the ECSSR did. And there are many similarities between this uh, uh, research center, an excellent and well-established, uh, uh, very productive and well-reputated uh, center, which was established, as I said, as which was uh, started, uh, which was started 
with a very good reputation and uh, we appreciate their own efforts and they remained uh, like that and we hope that they will remain in the forthcoming years to continue the same path uh, that they have followed. The Emirates Center for Strategic Studies and Research applies uh, research uh, and professional techniques, uh, advanced techniques uh, in relation to uh, 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 subjects that are related to policies. Some of them uh, may come from out of the uh, uh, country or maybe out of a certain policy, including translations uh, and research uh, and studies, uh, may, and also some uh, efforts uh, by holding conferences and seminars. But the ECSSR intends to uh, uh, concentrate and focus on public policies uh, uh, directing its own path towards that thing to reach the targeted information and targeting uh, 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 knowledge. It tries always to uh, uh, make a kind of a, uh, a compliance with the interests of the state and the interests of the public policy and the audience and the public in general and they are also independent in their agenda and setting up their own research uh, agenda and the publication of their own findings and I don't think that the sponsor and the finances of the center do not follow the details or the many with details of these research. And they are not mainly concerned with them, but they are mainly interested in the results and the findings of these research. The ECSSR has been very active in defining and spotting the uh, soft and uh, serious uh, threats related to politics, uh, security matters, uh, political and strategic threats or solid or critical uh, security and military threats and provided uh, uh, many alternatives and uh, variables uh, dealing with them through different interdisciplinary studies and many of the research uh, that, uh, 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 available now uh, behind you use different uh, methodologies uh, that deal with these subjects and they did not stop at the formalities of the application of the methodology but uh, uh, they try to reach that productive truth and uh, uh, the ECSSR uh, 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 studies try to alleviate the tensions uh, 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 that surround and engulf the decision making process because the uh, political decision is always surrounded and engulfed by uh, some uh, state of instability and state of concern and psychological tension and these studies alleviate uh, the, uh, uh, the instability in uh, making policies and, uh, and decisions and many uh, research and studies uh, uh, provided many uh, alternatives for the uh, decision maker and the country and these studies in fact uh, enable uh, reaching a, a real settlement uh, uh, by uh, creating kind of a balance by providing a uh, mature uh, vision uh, for the political uh, decision in order to be taken for the public interest and uh, the uh, uh, Emirates Center also uh, tried to identify the seriousness and the uh, 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 feasibility of these uh, uh, policies and some of these policies uh, could not be sustained and could not be assured without having uh, a, a, a highly practical and feasible studies that would sustain public policies through the methodology of the content that is prov provided to the decision makers and also the, uh, uh, on the perspectives of the future. And Dr. Jamal Sanad Suedi in his opening remark uh, said that one of the purposes of uh, this center is to realize that uh, introspect uh, uh, vision and you cannot have that vision unless you uh, have uh, something to study the future, to foresee the future uh, that goes beyond the present and, uh, and also to provide and to identify the movement or the mobility of variables. Many decisions, even when taken, may face some variables uh, that may deviate them or take them away from the public interest uh, goals and therefore this uh, uh, support uh, provided by strategic studies or introspective uh, and for, uh, foreseeing the few of future foreseeing uh, things may help also change these variables and they also provide information to 
uh, have a kind of objectivity and the decision maker usually face uh, many uh, uh, choices and options while they are besieged by time. As I said, time is limited and very narrow for the decision makers and therefore there must be a kind of an objective compromise uh, and balance uh, among the different available uh, options. Uh, furthermore, it enhanced the awareness of uh, the uh, necessity of providing uh, uh, solutions and the enhancement of competitiveness among options and the decisions uh, and the policies uh, or the public policies taken uh, because these public policies enter into uh, competitiveness with other policies and enter into a state of competition with uh, uh, some decisions that of uh, economic nature and other things that are related to uh, something which is out of the local reality and many of these policies and decisions of economic nature may be faced with competitiveness uh, beyond your borders and the decision maker cannot uh, control them unless uh, th that uh, maker, a decision maker uh, uh, relies on well informed knowledge uh, uh, knowing uh, the details uh, of uh, what happens through and inside your country by the sociological studies of uh, uh, the figures and facts uh, and uh, this will not help you unless you have that sociological studies and the use of statistics and uh, 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 that would comply with the reality due to uh, the uh, huge numbers of uh, statistics and uh, this requires a kind of acclimatization and uh, balance and uh, and this uh, could not be done but by uh, the uh, research centers and just two minutes only The decision maker usually ask, uh, asks the think, uh, think tanks uh, uh, to make sure of the condition of the correctness of the decisions taken. Many of the resolutions and uh, decisions taken uh, require uh, to be uh, uh, accurate and to be right and valid. And uh, this requires, uh, of course, uh, many other remarks uh, that I could not uh, cover in my own uh, uh, paper and within the le these two minutes. But I avail myself of this opportunity once again to congratulate uh, and to stress my own wholehearted congratulation uh, uh, on this occasion, a very happy occasion to have a, a, a a center that was established 20 years ago and continues on the path of success uh, uh, reaching this uh, stage and we uh, may also uh, we, uh, express our happiness for the product and the achievement and to promote uh, the, the use of this excellent achievement and what they will do in the future because this huge uh, achievement of knowledge uh, could not be limited to the United Arab Emirates only but also could uh, include uh, uh, all other Arab uh, countries and even out of the Arab countries. And once again, I thank you for this opportunity. And my thanks, uh, uh, and my thanks also go to the chairman of this session for the unlimited uh, time that he gave me. And thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Dr. Sadiq, uh, for uh, this uh, speech and uh, what you have given us of information about the importance of research centers. You have explained as well thoroughly about the role of the center. We at the SSR, the reason behind our success in all our meetings, the reason in our success is said to be based on two things. You follow up on the developments and you take a good decision following up on these developments and uh, based on creativity and innovation. Without this, we cannot be in the forefront of events. Now we open the floor for a 20-minute discussion. Kindly, if you have any question, uh, introduce yourselves. Uh, introduce your names, where you work, and be brief in your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Farhan. Thank you, Dr. Sadiq. 
Uh, we would like to congratulate ourselves for the 20-year anniversary of the ECSSR. In brief, uh, uh, my questions are uh, explanations, definitely for Dr. Sadr. In case of certain discrepancies between uh, the decision makers and uh, the think tanks um, or research centers, how can we really trespass uh, uh, these two uh, um, big centers. You have really mentioned uh, the Arab Thought Forum. Two decades ago, we uh, discussed this uh, gap between decision makers and research centers. In one of your books, you have really defined the Japanese experience as a model. If we take uh, this idea uh, where Dr. Sadeddin has criticized it, or if we take it upon ourselves to discuss it as a cultural uh, project, could we uh, have trespassed uh, these crises that we are passing through in the demands of the minorities? Uh, uh, the ACSSR uh, on the local level and the Arabic level uh, has really uh, trespassed its time. According to my readings uh, and the implications or ramifications of our studies, uh, so, uh, this represents a problem, for instance, uh, for the research center and for us uh, to follow up on what they are really discussing uh, constitutes those who are followers, media outlets and others a problem and uh, f a problem for the center because the space of freedom and intellect is still linked to the mechanisms of research and does not really resort to implementations. I'm talking about what Dr. Shaman Suwaidi has been talking about, freedom our relations with Iran and the U.S. and other issues are trespassing all phases and whether on the level of research centers. I'm talking about the elites in general. Do not really respond to that or it becomes only a reader or a critique. We shall take a number of questions. Question and then we will come back to that. Uh, Yes, please. In the name of God Almighty, Mahmoud Al Sarhan, Arab Thought Forum, Jordan, uh, due to the importance of this uh, success stories, uh, due to the efforts of Dr. Jamal and his active team, how can we, as Arab research centers, to benefit in achieving cooperation and integration and networking between all these centers to achieve far more achievements uh, uh, for the uh, contemporary Arab causes? Uh, thank you. Of course, in the beginning, I would like to express uh, my congratulations to the ECSSR and to Dr. Jamal al Suwaidi. I have two points. After all these years, in my opinion, the research centers and the think tanks are looked at in the region, in the developing countries, even in the Arabic countries, as a part in every uh, cause and its role might not uh, be appreciated and as we see that uh, might help in the decision making process or the rationalization in the decision making process. How or how can we make these research centers an integral part of the government's uh, management uh, as mentioned uh, it, it plays a role in rationalizing decision makers and helping decision makers to succeed in taking uh, suitable decisions around different causes. The world is filled with developments. The Gulf Summit uh, law, uh, uh, held uh, comes at a very, uh, really complicated time. From the Doha Summit to the Kuwait uh, uh, Summit, so many things have changed. The Yemen, uh, Houthis, uh, and uh, uh, Daesh or ISIL, how can we really believe in that? Second 
question the development of man in uh, Western countries. It is not really uh, strange to contribute in these centers, but the, the philanthropists, the rich uh, people savant center has contributed or someone contributed uh, to Brookings or CIS or other centers. How can even the Arab uh, rich people, philanthropists, contribute not only the government in helping the establishment of research centers to help as a contribution from them to help the countries and the societies that they're living in. These are two points. Uh, how can we develop these two points, these two ideas, so that we cannot be really a part uh, in that? Uh, I know that uh, this is an idea that should be changed, definitely. And uh, second, how can the rich people contribute in helping, supporting, and building or establishing units, as Dr. Farhan and Dr. Sadiq have mentioned, uh, and other speakers as well, in the manner in which which uh, we can establish specialized centers and units within each center that uh, take care of important issues. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, our gratitude and thanks uh, uh, also go to the ECSSR and to Dr. Jamal Sanad Suedi, the Director General of the Center, for their great efforts, and we really appreciate their uh, uh, their efforts in supporting the public policies, uh, of course, without uh, uh, underestimating the role of think tanks in supporting public policies and the qualification and the preparation of researchers and the production of knowledge and uh, studies. My question is to Dr. Sadiq. Uh, Al Faqih, whose uh, uh, paper uh, started with a question What do, do decision makers want from research centers? With my due respect to the idea of the difference between the two time limits for the uh, researchers and decision makers, I'd like to ask you about three points here. First of all, to what extent, to what extent uh, do think tanks in the Arab world, including the Gulf region, uh, uh, do they contribute to the decision making? I'm not talking about public policies and supporting policies, yes, uh, we know that they support it. But uh, second, these think tanks, do they have information, uh, certain uh, or sufficient information about that decision to be taken or might be taken? Mm, you know, there are some confidential information uh, uh, which are, uh, you know, uh, uh, withheld from uh, the research centers. Uh, the third point is that do the decision makers uh, uh, want Want the research centers to provide them with some information about a certain topic, a certain subject. Do you have any statistics? Do you have any references? And another point, you talked about our own societies. Do our societies appreciate and recognize the role of research centers? I'm not talking about governments. I'm talking about our own communities regarding the significance of these think tanks. Thank you. Dr. Abdurrava, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the chance, all of you. Thank you. Dr. Abdurrava. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In the name of Allah, my name is Abdurrava Isir from the Kuwait University. In fact, uh, 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 giving my own testimony uh, may not be uh, positive or may not be taken seriously because I love this place, because I have uh, been following the idea, and then it became an embryo, and then a newly born child, and now a person of 20 years old. And I hope, inshallah, to celebrate the 15th anniversary. Please don't forget to invite us. and. I congratulate the UAE for having this excellent center and congratulations to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed and to our dear brother Dr. Khal, uh, Jamal Sal Suedi. Uh, and uh, one uh, word only, just to say something. What distinguishes this center is uh, the opposite of the general impression that we have as thinkers, intellectuals, and researchers that we have. The general impression is that these research centers and think tanks in the third world countries. Uh, are only tools and instruments uh, in the hands of governments uh, in order to justify their own policies. This center has been distinguished by its own independence, its own objectivity and uh, realism. And to prove this, uh, the, 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 the 
the, the conferences and the lectures exceeded the, the number 400 and hundreds of conferences and the achievements and publications more than 1,000. Therefore, I, I say it again, congratulations to have to all of us to have such a, a center in the UAE and the Gulf uh, nations. And I think we have to change it, not only the Emirates, but we can say the Gulf Center for Studies and Research, because it is not, it's not only a five-star center but more than that, thank you again. Thank you for having this, uh, and I hope I will celebrate the 15th anniversary. Don't forget to invite us again. Dr. Siham, please. Dr. Siham al Gawendi from the Kuwait University, I may avail myself of this opportunity to uh, congratulate the United Arab Emirates for uh, this uh, for the establishment of the ECSSR, and my congratulations also go to Dr. Jamal Aswadi for uh, uh, his uh, uh, leadership and his own ability to uh, 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 rise to this level of progress and uh, advanced uh, uh, position. Uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, the word that uh, was said by Dr. As-Sadiq, uh, that we have to measure time uh, between the process of uh, uh, researching and decision making. I think the matter is related to the satisfaction of the state or the government uh, that uh, looks for a, a decision or a political decision. And the elites, uh, uh, we all know that elites, intellectuals, and scholars, and researchers are very important for the decision makers and that they can provide them with whatever information uh, they need in order to take their uh, correct and valid uh, decisions or resolutions. But I think that the pioneering experience of the UAE is a good example, and we all talk about this beautiful model to be followed in the Arab region. But, uh, but uh, there is a missing chain here, a missing thing, a missing ring in this chain be between the intellectuals and the thinkers and writers. and. Uh, the decision makers, and we hold many uh, conferences and organize many seminars, and uh, it is well known in the Arab countries that the research uh, 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 or studies and conferences are so many, but uh, how to make use of the findings of these uh, studies uh, uh, is the problem, in fact. And this question is always raised, are we, uh, are the intellectuals and the researchers and the uh, uh, Scholars, do they have that uh, feeling of uh, uh, the need of the decision makers? In fact, we have to fill in this gap, and in order to uh, 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 know exactly what governments and decision makers need, and the intellectual elites, and uh, because the uh, university professors and the academics and the thinkers uh, may not be effective in their own ideas unless they are supported by these policies. Thank you. Very much indeed. Dr. Bedr Ashatri. Thank you very much indeed, uh, sir, Mr. Chairman. I agree uh, with all those uh, well wishes uh, uh, on uh, this occasion, and uh, uh, I want to know the relationship between the think tanks and the Western countries, and we may think that they are more independent than the third world countries' research centers. And the problem uh, is that these think tanks adapt themselves, adjust themselves to the policies of the advanced nations uh, as they adopt uh, uh, research that support uh, uh, in advance these policies. Perhaps, uh, perhaps one of the most important uh, uh, empirical case uh, is that the uh, for example, to take the, uh, uh, the U.S.-led uh, invasion of Iraq before the invasion, all the uh, research centers supported this policy, and they did not debate it, did not discuss it, and thus, uh, and because of this competitiveness and the large number of research centers, the decision maker uh, uh, brought and attracted uh, more ideas uh, that would uh, comply with their own ideas and 
intentions, and thus they are able to legitimize their own policies, policies, and thus, and thus, even to promote themselves and to be more capable of having more financial support, they try to adapt themselves with these policies. This is the problem. Uh, the second problem, especially in the United States of America, is that many decision makers uh, uh, come from certain research centers. For example, if the president is a Democrat, uh, uh, most of his own uh, White House employees and the national uh, uh, security uh, come from Carnegie or Brookings. If he was a Republican, they come from uh, uh, American Prize Heritage and uh, others. Okay. So thus, even the decision maker is produced in this place and, uh, and in this method that uh, uh, w uh, w which is in its own essence is a kind of a, 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 a kind of a pre-attitude before they are taking these decisions. Thank you very much indeed. We'll take three questions only to Dr. Behjet and then to Dr. Saad. Dr. Behjet, please. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Without further ado, I agree with all my colleagues to congratulate the center and Dr. Jamal. And my question to Dr. Sadiq Al-Faqih, and maybe you may change or adapt the title of your work, is how to rationalize public policies. I think that decision makers do not have time to read and to have more knowledge. And this is the task of the think tanks and the uh, uh, research centers. And uh, the major question in the Arab region in general that these centers rely on the support of the state. The, and the major puzzle here is that how can you depend on the finance of the state and at the same time you uh, uh, secure the, your independence by giving your advice and your own tips, Dr. Saad? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, congratulate the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies on this uh, occasion of 20 years of excellence and productivity. And I'd like to thank uh, all the speakers for their own uh, for highlighting the certain points that they talked about. And uh, I know that, and you know all, that the scientific research describes, analyzes, interprets, and predicts. And here in the Arab region, almost three or four years ago, we've been passing through upheavals and violent upheavals and transformations that were described as as an Arab Spring for Democratic Transformation, my question to the two speakers, respectful speakers, in, are we in our studies, in our own research studies, uh, and, and uh, in our own centers, throughout the last 30 years and 20 years, have we uh, uh, seen any signs or even a kind of predictions, signals, of uh, the Arab Spring, or, uh, 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 or are we like the uh, 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 things that uh, took place when the Berlin Wall fell down and collapsed uh, in Eastern Europe and without uh, any prediction? So the question uh, uh, may be uh, uh, added to the previous uh, comments. Uh, 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 we as research centers, uh, uh, do we have that independence or that level of independence and the ability to be more innovative and uh, initiators to uh, uh, predict uh, the future and uh, so that the decision maker and the public opinion in general and the people in general, because the matter is always concerned with the public opinion and not only the decision maker. Uh, do these research centers uh, throughout the last 30 years, for example, have been able to uh, uh, have been able to predict uh, what uh, uh, happened since 2010 in Tunisia, Egypt, uh, Libya, and then the uh, other Arab countries? A question that I hope that you may have time and patience to respond to. Thank you. Last question. Last question, and my apologies for the others because we are limited by our own time. And question, please. Yes. 
Dr. Mohammed Shihi, I have a question to Dr. Sadiq uh, regarding the uh, use or the employment of foreign experts and how much does this affect the decision-making process? Thank you. And now we will give the time to the two speakers to respond to these questions. I don't know. Uh, we start with you, Dr. Farhan. Thank you. Thank you very much. There is a very wide range of questions, but I shall, rather than answer the specific questions, pick up three particular themes, which I think are, uh, are touched upon by most of the questioners. I think the first is about the diversity of opinions in a think tank. And that answers some of the issues, I, I believe, that have been raised. A think tank has to provide a safe space where people can come up with ideas, unfashionable ideas sometimes, uh, in order to understand the world. Uh, I personally feel there is a slight confusion when we think that think tanks, in a sense, uh, are, we confuse them with decision making as such. Decision-making lies elsewhere. It is the role of governments. They decide. The role of think tanks is to be able to influence policy and to inform policy. If we have an informed policy, and then one can influence policy as well, it is not necessarily to take the decision and therefore be bound by all the implications of having decided something. The role of a think tank, to my mind, has to be one of informing policy and therefore influencing policy. It is not necessarily even one of selling policy. That is done by some think tanks, but my, my personal view is that it is not for research centers to, uh, uh, to sell policy. It is to inform policy, to influence policy. Uh, the second thing I want to pick up is about the sources of funding. Yes, of course, if, if, uh, if a government wishes to support uh, research, that's fine. And I think that is also important for private uh, uh, generosity to influence, uh, uh, to, to support research. Uh, uh, and indeed, the idea was mentioned whether in, a, in order to support uh, these area study centers and so on, there might be uh, a private sources of, of funding. Uh, that too, I, uh, to my mind, I think there is no harm in that. However, to an assume that private funding does not come with its own baggage, I think could be slightly naive. Both, all sources of funding have their own constraints and have their own possibilities. And one, it is up to the researcher to be aware of that. That happens particularly in medical research, where the, these days you have big pharma companies that might support some research, and there are all issues around that as well. There was a, a question raised about better uh, coordination and uh, between research centers between think tanks. I think that uh, is laudable in different countries that people do interact. But I personally believe it is not an institutional link. It is more the ability to draw in different opinions that is needed. If all research centers are integrated, if all think tanks are integrated, then one does not need too many think tanks. I think the idea of a think tank has to be to, to deliberately encourage plurality of views and thereby provide the opportunity for those who need that opinion to be able to choose from that. And therefore, yes, certainly, better interaction between different uh, uh, institutions is important, but the ability to bring in different uh, positions and individual opinions, I think that is more important. I think Professor Saad Ibrahim asked a very important question. 
but he asked a question the answer to which he already knows so i shall not answer thank you dr farhan dr sadiq tfadl thank you very much uh, once again many many questions in fact and uh, i hope i can uh, uh, respond to some of them at least and uh, Mr. Khalid, uh, talking about the uh, contradiction between the two times, I said that this contradiction uh, uh, lies there in the nature of the times allocated to the decision making and the public policies. Uh, and, and this is very decisive, in fact. And uh, this uh, time has its own implications. And as for the time dedicated to research, uh, it's an opportunity for the researcher to uh, uh, produce some thing which is open in fact and the time is open and the researcher is in a favorable position so uh, uh, the decisiveness of uh, the moment uh, uh, decides and thus uh, 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 and the researcher may need more time but if you have the information you have uh, uh, to take the decision yes of course there is a kind of a, a problem in fact in these uh, two times so to speak and therefore uh, coping with it is very important in this respect, especially if these institutions are directly related to the state or the government, they may provide all the opportunities that will make the time for us uh, for research uh, in compliance with the time of decision making. And as for the idea of uh, uh, bridging the gap between intellectuals and the decision makers uh, to avoid the upheavals and the uh, uh, problems in the Arab uh, policies, uh, in fact, this is another problem a concern for most of the intellectuals and researchers and the decision uh, makers, as I said in my own presentation, as uh, they insisted on this idea, which helped in the establishment of many think tanks and research centers in the Arab world and the other uh, countries outside, that there is always a gap uh, and how to bridge this gap uh, so that we can help the decision maker uh, uh, to make use of the research and the studies presented by research. And uh, I think uh, this uh, center has uh, 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 been uh, uh, presented as a, a pioneer in this field and uh, because of our feeling that uh, our communities are still lagging behind the research centers and uh, therefore uh, the need for research centers uh, was uh, even uh, more dire than those and we wished that we had uh, these centers even in the beginnings of the 20th century for example and and, and thus uh, we should not have this feeling that this center came before its own uh, time no in fact it ha should have been established years and years before that uh, if it had been there we wouldn't have that sense of uh, 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 of feeling that our uh, uh, communities and societies are still underdeveloped and these uh, centers are established to help these communities to cope with their own tem contemporary world and uh, and the absence of these centers will hinder the progress of these nations and we wished that these uh, uh, centers uh, uh, were established years and decades ago and therefore as for the space of freedom and space of uh, intellectuality this is something related to uh, independence and uh, the decision maker even if it was a financer and, and a creator and the founder of the, the think tank, I think it would be better and in their own favor to give these centers their freedom and independence because uh, there is nothing absolute, of course, neither in independence or in freedom, but uh, whenever you increase the space for independence and uh, uh, freedom of that uh, center, which is supported and affiliated and, and financed by any regime, will be uh, in the benefit of the regime and not against it because this uh, freedom is limited within the scope of research and the scope of supporting the decision makers and the public policies and therefore there is no harm in that and the benefit will be uh, better than the uh, uh, 
the negatives and the implications or the repercussions that uh, might be suspected. How can we cooperate and network? All centers are working in this respect. This meeting is uh, uh, one of uh, these very valuable occasions to promote uh, networking and cooperation between all institutions. We have uh, a number of uh, people uh, heading uh, research centers in different countries. This is an opportunity to get to know each other and to network. Uh, uh, Mr. Abdullah and his question. We, uh, as looking at these centers as a part uh, of uh, 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 political, for instance, perspectives, uh, a number of the research studies that uh, these centers are uh, really producing are not given to the society, knowing that our role is to enlighten the public opinion, but uh, mostly with uh, the congestion of the ideas that we have and the political issue, uh, uh, the uh, stern political issue has a priority uh, definitely in, uh, in really uh, talking about through media outlets that might evaluate a number of positive uh, work for the interest of public policies and for the interest of uh, the public opinion. So uh, the good perspective Perspective, having a good research study cannot uh, really move hand in hand with the political uh, cause and political uh, news. And uh, therefore, when the citizen uh, who uh, really does not look at what the research centers are producing, think of these centers as a party. Even some of the people, uh, political uh, parties or political uh, figures really think of it, of these centers as such, because they cannot uh, really, or they don't play a part uh, in these uh, centers. The development uh, in uh, the West uh, and the support of the philanthropists, yes, there are lots of uh, uh, really centers, the Carnegie endowments, and so on and so forth. It's uh, uh, supported by philanthropists and rich people, as mentioned previously. In our Arabic world, there are a lot Lots, uh, lots of uh, uh, real examples of the interest of wealthy people and their interest in uh, research centers and academic centers and think tanks. And uh, therefore, we cannot really think otherwise or speak otherwise. Dr. Ansari, Arabic centers in supporting decision-making process. I think that uh, this is a reality. And the ECSSR is uh, an example about uh, this. And what Dr. Jamal Sanad Suwaidi has mentioned this morning is certain and does not deny uh, the relation of this intellectual pr pr product in the decision-making process in the country. And I think that a number of Gulf countries really are uh, walking towards the same path. Uh, and the centers, or they're benefiting from the information produced by these uh, centers within the country and outside of the country. And um, the center, uh, does it know what decision makers want and the manner in which these uh, decisions are taken? Yes and no alike. Yes, if the centers uh, are related to the government and it is asked of it to support a decision or public policies and decision making process, I can say that they can be given an opportunity to get to know the decision making processes. Uh, does the decision maker asks information? Yes, constantly, because uh, they are consuming information that are being produced. We have seen this, whether we have seen this or not, whether we appreciate it or not. At the end of the day, these policies are built on information, and the information are being produced by institutions, university institutions, and academic institutions, and others. OK, not a single decision is uh, being uh, taken without being built based on information. At the end, they are information produced um, somewhere in our societies.
uh, to talk about uh, information and knowledge and that the societies not really appreciate that. Dr. Siham, uh, the country that looks for a sound decision making process, yes, uh, missing link in our uh, political and research environment, but the more the efforts are exerted, uh, the more the capabilities of these research centers are really exacerbated and uh, uh, this is going forward definitely uh, we are uh, going uh, through this journey the relationship of research centers with the western countries i think they're talking about this issue is avoiding some of the truths and realities everything what's what happened in the 2003 was it uh, uh, western will uh, perhaps i think that uh, the local need was bigger much bigger perhaps we might really uh, differ in some of the details and the manner in which uh, uh, this invasion occurred but perhaps yes there was a reception responsiveness uh, uh, that uh, uh, these uh, people came and did what they did in 2003 in the in Iraq, uh, and uh, had there not been this responsiveness, the Western uh, wouldn't have been able to come and do what they did in Iraq. The rationalization of public policies, uh, we have answered this question definitely. Independence. The presence of uh, 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 research centers, some of the Western researchers in the Arabic research centers, does it affect? Uh, yes. Does it impact? Yes. It, it uh, impacts both parties. It provides a different perspective. It provides an opportunity. I think that it is a valuable opportunity for the Western researcher to get to know the uh, intricate uh, details of the information here. We are really uh, uh, knowing all uh, uh, information that are being written in a good manner, but huge gaps are there, uh, great gaps that do not enable us uh, to work uh, properly, uh, to, to uh, take uh, decisions uh, soundly. So the intimate knowledge with the local knowledge uh, uh, is needed by Western researchers in the region, and some of the research centers are are in need of that, uh, those who came and established uh, branches here, Brookings in uh, Doha, Brand Corporation in Doha, as well, Carnegie Endowment uh, in Beirut. So the presence of these centers and employing this uh, local cadre, which has an intimate uh, relation with local knowledge, can help these centers and institutions uh, and to give it a better understanding of the nature of the information because the information is not something rigid that can be taken from afar. The information has a sociological relation with the societies, a cultural historical relationship with the societies. Uh, um, and therefore, knowing this information doesn't come from afar, no matter how many relations he has or she has, uh, and the institutions that came to the region to employ those who know better uh, of the issues that are emanating in the region and the researchers that come here are enabled to uh, create uh, uh, an intimate relation with the knowledge here. Last question. the institution institutions, and uh, I apologize for not answering all the questions, the intellectual uh, centers, have they predicted uh, what happened in 2010 uh, uh, forward? Uh, in details, no, definitely, but a number of researchers, uh, researchers uh, a certain, uh, and the books behind me, has a number of insinuations of the Arab crises in different forms, political, societal crises, cultural, uh, identity crises, all these uh, issues have been 
been tackled and insinuated one way or another, but uh, uh, not a single center have named it uh, uh, as Arabic Spring or otherwise, and these intifada and revolutions uh, uh, in, in its current impact, even at the Arab Thought Foundation, uh, Arab Thought Forum. Um, uh, a month ago, we were talking about the escalation of the uh, violent uh, sta uh, statuses in the Arabic societies and uh, the upheavals and explosions of current uh, or local identities in a number of Arabic societies, uh, the destabilization of trust in the Arabic uh, societies, all these are insinuations that produced the revolutions of the Arabic Spring, but no one has named it uh, as such. And I don't think that even the revolutions and those who led it have named it so many names that we, uh, we, uh, we know of. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sadiq al faqih I would like to mention a very important point and a question by Dr. Saad and what Dr. Sadiq has mentioned as well. At the ECSSR, we have prepared a number of the studies, a conference uh, before the occurrence of these events and the developments in the Arabic countries. The conference was to predict the future. It was held before that, and this included all the problems that the country are facing, the Arabic region is facing. At the end of this session, I would like to uh, uh, thank Dr. Farhan Nizami, Dr. Sadiq Al-Faqih on their uh, studies and would like to thank you all for your participation. And uh, now I call you uh, to take a, a five-minute break. We are already late on our time and then we come back to our uh, uh, to the session.